Hello everyone, how are you? Um, I have 15 minutes before I have to go to a meeting and I thought, what can I do in 15 minutes? I know, make a video. I wanted to talk today about all the sexual harassment cases that have been just overwhelming us. Every day you wake up and you wonder who else is going to fall and what ignominious falls they have been, just catastrophic demises. Um, the most recent of, of which, no, it's not even the most recent, I can't even keep up with them, but the one that shocked me the most that I found just a heart breaking was Matt Lauer. <laughs> I loved Matt Lauer. Oh well, but you know what? I was shocked, but I wasn't surprised because we women have been saying this has been going on for eons, since the dawn of man. Since men and women have been occupying the same space on this earth, there has been sexual harassment, sexual misconduct, sexual abuse, um, all of that. And um, now, I mean, this is a watershed moment. Our voices are being heard. We are becoming emboldened. Um, but a lot of people are saying, well, why are the women coming out just now? Why are they just now doing it? Well, because it's not easy. Many times we think about the repercussions, the fallout, um, you know, the sequelae. What's going to happen if I do report my boss or my superior or what have you? Um, and that's a real consideration because the practical aspect of life uh, hits you in the face. And that's why you often can't report your uh, oppressor or um, you may not have a reporting agency. You may not have a human resource department that you can just walk to and, and report someone. So it's hard. I mean, if you're a single mom with three children and you have a good job and it, it's paying you well and you have good benefits, it's more than a notion to want to rat out your caddish boss when you're thinking, what if he fires me? You can't just find a new job next week. That's not that easy. Why do you think women stay in, in terrible relationships? Uh, married women stay in abusive marriages because you're thinking, what's going to happen? You know, yeah, sure. Your husband comes and beats you over the head every night. Sure, you could call the police, but then what? Who pays the bills when he's in jail, especially if you're not working, if you've never had a career? So those are the things you think about. I mean, I've had a, a Me Too moment. Um, who hasn't had a Me Too moment? I think the more illustrative exercise would have been if we asked the question, who has this not happened to? And, and coin it, uh, hashtag not me. Hashtag not me. Of which there would probably be seven respondents in the world, and one would be a lizard. I'm not trying to be mean. I mean an actual lizard who accidentally scampered across the keyboard and typed in hashtag not me. Anyway, so I come with tips because I had a not me moment, not me, I had a me too moment. And, um, you know, sometimes you, you can't, you can't tell. Um, you want to, but it's just not conducive. Maybe the environment isn't conducive. So I come for tips. I come with tips for men and for women. For women, the key is you must disarm your oppressor, but leave him with his dignity intact. Even though he doesn't deserve to have his dignity left intact, yes, he deserves to be verbally castrated. But like I said, you know, practical issues may arise and you may not just be able to do it right then. But you want to, um, you know, you want to lessen your attacks or at least get a hold on them. So it depends on your personality. But what I find is that you, if you can find, like, go through scenarios in your head, okay, what can I say that will disarm him? Let me give you an example. When I was a resident, a pediatric resident, um, years ago, this is the training program after you finish medical school. And um, we have attendings, which are our supervising physicians. And I was presenting a case to an attending. And that's what you do. You present your cases to make sure that you're on the right track, that you're doing the right um, clinical things. So this was during the time of the uh, crack epidemic and HIV was on the rise. So I had a four-month-old who had a fever, was born to an HIV-positive mom, with some sensitive issues. So I was talking to the attending kind of relatively closely, maybe about this far. But I was, you know, had my voice down for confidentiality reasons. And so I talked to him and I said, I have a four month old. I just did a, a urine culture and a blood culture. And I just wanted to know if, you know, the fever is 104. Should I go on ahead and do a lumbar puncture or can I just push Rosefin now? And I paused waiting for his answer. And he, he just continued looking at my mouth. And you know, women, when you get that eerie feeling that, oh, something's about to go south, he's about to say something inappropriate. Well, he did. So I finished my sentence and I said, you know, should I push Rosefin or should I do a lumbar puncture first? So he's still staring at my lips. And he leans and he goes, I think you are so sexy. So it was jarring. But what I did was instead of, you know, flying off the handle and, you know, showing him that I'm there, I just, I cocked my head to the side and I said, thank you. Now, should I push row seven or should I do the lumbar puncture first? And that kind of disarmed him. 
It really did. And we never had an, an encounter like that again. So women, you kind of have to do that. Um, go through scenarios, find things that you maybe can say that will kind of disarm him, but leave him with his dignity intact. And that's the key to every interaction in life. If you can leave people with their dignity intact, you'll, you'll fare much better. Now for men, this is important. Listen up. Um, I'm going to give you tips to keep you out of trouble. First of all, this is the first, it's just two. The first one is keep your pants on at the workplace. Why was that the punchline to every story that the woman said? And then he dropped his pants and then he drops his pants. Why are you dropping your pants so much? Oh my gosh. All right. So that's the first thing in the workplace. I don't know. Try to keep your pants on. There are probably only four times that I can come up with right now off the top of my head where dropping your pants is appropriate. One is like in, your, in the bathroom stall. Okay, we'll give you that. In the privacy of your home, in the bathroom stall, whatever. Um, number two is, you know, when you and your significant other, your consenting significant other are doing whatever you want to do in your intimate moments, that's okay. Number three, um, at the in a fitting room uh, or at the gym locker room, sure, go ahead, drop your pants. And number four is at the doctor's office um, before you're getting your exam. And only when asked. Don't just come in dropping your pants. We don't want to see all that just then. But the other times, keep your pants on. And the second big tip is if you're ever confused or concerned about, well, what is, is what I'm saying appropriate or not? Could this be misconstrued, um, you know, as harassment? I'm just trying to compliment. Okay, so here is the test, the measuring standard to which I want you to apply all things that you say and do. If you would not say it or do it to your sister or your mother, do not say it or do it to your female colleague. Got it? Let's go through an example. For instance, now if you see your sister, man, if you have a sister and she walks in with a beautiful dress that's fitting her perfectly, you'd say, sis, that dress looks nice on you. That's okay. She'd probably say, thank you, move along. If you said it like this, sis, that dress looks nice on you. Mm. Same words, different delivery. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So if you wouldn't say it, or do it, and if you wouldn't say it in that way to your sister or your mother, then you shouldn't say it to your female colleague. And I hope you wouldn't say it that way to your sister, because if you said yes, you would say it that way, that second way to your sister, then I gotta make another video for you <laughs> on a whole different topic. Anyway, so just little tips to keep us all safe and comfortable, because we should, women, we should be able to go to work without the threat of our male colleague dropping his pants in a closed door meeting. Anyway, gotta go to my meeting. Peace and love.